So I got some new lenses today, these little guys, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the lens that Nikon sent me about three months ago, the Nikkor Z 35 millimeter F 1.8 S lens for the Nikon Z mirrorless system. They sent it to me to review for three months and that time has almost passed. So I have to send it back and that means it's time for me to share my thoughts on it with you guys. It is a very lightweight lens and it has a 62 millimeter filter threading. So a little bit smaller than the others. And most of the visible barrel is a focus ring. Mine is just enough room to place a focus switch to toggle between autofocus and manual focus. I don't think I would recommend it for vlogging unless your arms are about four and a half feet long. My arm is fully extended right now and I'm 6'4". The focus ring, which can also be configured into an aperture or exposure compensation ring, spins with very little tension. It spins almost too easily for my personal preference. When using it in manual focus, it is a focus by wire system, not linear and not repeatable, which I find to be kind of an undesirable trait for lenses. Thankfully, the Nikon Z mirrorless lineup has some extraordinary autofocus features, and I've only ever actually used manual focus on any of my Z lenses in testing, in real use. I've just left them on autofocus and either used face detection or point tracking without any issues. The autofocus motors are very silent while recording video, but it makes an audible but faint clicking noise when using it in photo mode. I've noticed this with other lenses too though, and I think it has something to do with the speed in which the lenses focus. Any audible focus noise during video recording would absolutely deter people, and they knew that. So great job on them, there's no audible noise when focusing in video mode. Some other reviewers that I've watched have complained that this lens feels too lightweight or cheap, uh, but I think that's not really a problem. The Z system is a new lens mount with a smaller flange distance, making it possible for new lenses to require less class and thereby be less heavy. Having to carry less weight isn't a bad thing. The lens is very small though, and the lens hood almost doubles the length of the lens on your camera. 35 millimeters is a great focal length. It's the focal length that most clearly resembles the human eye. It's wide enough to do landscapes and establish a setting, but it also works great for portraits or filming people. For the record, I own and also use the Z24-70 2.8 S and the Z14-30 F4 S. So I have one other lens that already covers the 35 millimeter focal range and another that gets pretty close. The reason I keep grabbing the 35 millimeter prime is because I like to film my videos around 35 millimeters and at f1.8. It's what I'm doing right now with my GH5. Going full frame with this same setup and the 35 millimeter 1.8 means I just get extra bokeh without having to adjust any of my lighting between the cameras. If I just want to pick up a camera and go take some pictures or take a quick video of something that's happening, I really do like the 35 millimeter. It's the perfect focal length that captures what I see. It doesn't make you look like you are a professional sports photographer, especially if you just take the lens hood off. I mean, it looks like a little point and shoot almost. It's less intrusive in that manner, I suppose. I mean, compared to something like the 24 to 70 f 2.8, this thing's huge. There's like no way you can sneak around with this thing. My community had a power outage and I took the lens outside for this very demanding autofocus test and as you can see it performed pretty well focusing on my neighbors. I also took a couple photos as the sun went away to kind of push the low light capabilities and I'm always impressed with what the Z6 is able to do. I really like this photo of my wife and our neighbor speaking on FaceTime. It was lit only with a flashlight bouncing off of my shorts. And this kind of ominous photo of my son lit with the light panels, Gemini one by one. All right, so real talk. Is this the right lens for you? Well, I'm using it right now for this particular shot. I guess the question you would have to ask yourself is, uh, I mean, did you get the 24 to 70 that came with it in the kit lens with your Z system or did you buy the body by itself? And if you did get a kit lens, are you satisfied with the low light performance? Do you need more blurry background? Do you find yourself always staying around 35 millimeters? I mean, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it, but only you can really decide if this lens is worth it for you. Nikon is coming out with more Z mirrorless cameras and Nikon is growing in market share and they're coming out with more lenses. So if you don't like the lens after you do buy it, you can always resell it fairly easily on the secondhand market. I really do like the lens, especially for this particular shot though. So if you're doing talking head videos, uh, something like this, I mean, I can almost reach the camera. Uh, autofocus works great, so you don't need to touch the camera. Uh, I definitely recommend this lens. Is it worth the $850 price tag though? 
Why is it so expensive? Well, I think it's priced accordingly. It's a new Prime designed for a new mount with the newest technology and optics. It has clarity across the range that rivals human eyeballs. Not my eyes, clearly. I wear reading glasses now. But it rivals someone's really great eyes. The new Z-mount lenses need to have enough resolving power to handle the new sensors that are coming out for the rest of the Z lineup that's being released. And the only way to use all those megapixels is to have a lens that can resolve light onto each one of them. So when you zoom in to 100%, it can still look nice and crispy. And that's more of a testament to the whole new Z-mount series of S lenses instead of just this 35mm prime. All of the new Z lenses are excellent and are being developed with the future in mind. You also get exceptional autofocus and you don't need to worry about an adapter as an additional point of failure. So you do pay a premium for the best, just like any other thing in any other industry. If you want to get the most out of your Z6 or Z7 or any other Z series of Nikon camera that's coming out, you should really invest in the new glass. I need to send this lens back now though, and my next Nikon video is going to be my full review of the Z6 and a comparison to some of the other cameras that I've used. If you want to see that video, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to pick up the 35mm f1.8, I've put an affiliate link in the video description. Feel free to use it. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.